You know, these golf pros kind of behave like clocks in the sense that they always have the same tempo. The physics of a clock is something that we call the harmonic oscillator. It just means a mass and a spring. There was golf instruction, right? I'm talking about like the early days. In the early days, you would see guys like swing, swing a pendulum and they would do the motion of it. It was all like about the motion of it, kind of like dancing. They would say like, you know, we're going to rhythmic to hear and then you know they would like they would play on a phonograph like a waltz or something and just kind of get you to the motion and they would have us like kind of a walking drill to do as you were hitting balls and things like that guys at St. Andrews went on a Wednesday and they saw somebody out practicing, like not even playing, like practicing. Listen, we talking about practice, not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. And then they got beat by them on Saturday. They were like, oh, this isn't fair. He was practicing. Like that, that was like a uh, very, it was like taboo for a while. The real job of golf instructor probably came a, a, along in the 80s, which is also when like video came in. So before you would have to like actually shoot a film, go get it developed and then like watch it maybe weeks later and at great expense. So it would really be only like the best players in like uh, film reels that would see this. When it came to like the personal camera and they would actually shoot people's swings. So what do you have there though? You have like an image of the person and this is, so then golf became you know, kind of based off of video, golf became insanely positional because you could take the video and say, hey, look at all these positions. And I think that set golf instruction back a little bit where golf instructors were getting about the same gains, I think, throughout the 80s that the original golf instructors were with no tech because they were learning some stuff from the positions that was nice and important. But then they had kind of totally dumped away all the rhythm and movement stuff when you just see like a a freeze frame of Lanny Watkins at impact and you tell your 10 handicapped country club member like, Oh, you know, do this. I mean, that's like not really super helpful. So now what's come along is that it's the difference between kinematics and kinetics. So the kinematics is the position of where it is, as I understand it. And that was like position based teaching and you got into and it's a great way. It's a language that every golfer should know P one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like you shouldn't be able to talk to your instructor in those terms to be able to know like, OK, what about this or that as you and I have done already. But really what you want is the pressure that makes the position. The position is not just something that happens in and of itself. That's like the, the end result of a lot of pressures and things. So, you know, if you have like a slinky with a mass attached to it, you'll know that this, you, the slinky will bounce back and forth exactly. And it'll go back and forth sort of always at the same tempo. Now a spring is, is just an image for something that always pulls you back to the origin. So you can start at the origin you can go away and pull and the spring just always pulls you back. And then things like swing catalyst and things like sensor edge and some other things that show the pressure and then that's really become the next wave in golf instruction is trying to get people to not mimic the positions but mimic the pressures and the kind of flow of a pro so it turns out that the model of the harmonic oscillator or the mass and the spring is a pretty good model for almost anything that once you pull it away from the origin wants to come back and then the positions just end up happening I know you're a huge fan of physicist Robert Grober, and his whole thing is resonance. So resonance is really neat in that you don't have to use a lot of energy to drive things at resonance, and it'll always be very, very, very consistent. Yeah. And that also brings into point your, your, the use of sensors, and you know, you'd mentioned earlier back in the day they would, they would train to waltzes or music. What kind of training would you do for that kind of consistent rhythm that he's such an advocate of? This has a, pure, a tempo that it wants to go at. And the tempo is defined by it, by its mass, and by how hard gravity pulls back. That also, as he points out back in 2008 or so, BJ Singh was using his training aids and crediting it with winning three out of five tournaments and also the 2008 FedEx Cup that year. Robert Grober is a guy that works at, uh, who used to work at Yale in very, very like extremely high tech stuff. And then beyond theory, like things that can actually be used by uh, governments around the world and things like that. So he worked at Yale. And then he left and he, I don't know, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just saying what's out there publicly. Okay. So I don't, I don't know what I can say or can't say, but he left there and he joined this group 
that is like a top secret group of geniuses that works on the real problems of the world and not the problems of the world even that you might see in the news and things like that like beyond those kind of things things that are like beyond maybe even like disclosure anyway so so he works with this very secret group that is like a think tank to work on big problems of the world but he's like an obsessed golfer so when i was a kid i grew up with the goal of being a golf professional and then i even went to college with the goal of being a golfer so what what he came up with and there's an amazing lecture on youtube that every golfer should watch he came up with this idea of force resonance and he at yale with the yale golf team with some other people he figured out that the the golf swing works like a spring so gravity pulls the pendulum back to the origin so you can model this as just a mass and a spring the mass is the mass of the club and the spring is gravity pulling it back and it works with force resonance which is the same thing that almost everything in the universe works on it has a particular frequency that it wants to go at we call this the resonant frequency and this is what driving it at this frequency is what we call resonance where people take use one part force going back and then double the force going through that's what great great golfers do they're a doubler they do one part force going back and what he did was in order to figure this out he had a a, a little string on the shaft that would would take it back and measure the force that the the golfer was putting into the club on the way back and then it would like fall off it was a, a really novel interesting way to do it anyway so he figured out that um if so like if they were hitting a 50 yard pitch they would put and these numbers are just just to make a point they probably don't mean anything they would put maybe like five newtons of force into it there and then they would put 10 newtons of force into the club on the way through if they were hitting a 300 yard drive they would put 20 newtons and then 40 newtons that's great golfers and they're working with the resonance of how the universe wants to work the best athletes work right at resonance and they work right at resonance because it's the most efficient way to work now bad golfers what do they do they put about one part of force on the way back and then nine parts of force on the way through uh, and that's the number one thing in golf instruction is lining up with that because everybody, uh, Quan. Hey, I'm in the lab at Texas Women's University with Dr. Quan. Thanks for having me. <laughs> very much. Thank you very much. And a lot of people are really trying to get people to take more forceful backswing. What does that do? What that does is when you take a more forceful backswing, Sasha McKenzie talks about this, Quan talks about this, Como talks about this, so many. You take this more forceful backswing, then you need you need to stop this club to start moving it the other way. In order to stop the club, you have to start recruiting the same muscles that would really be working well to make a good downswing. So once you're back here, the process, once you're back to about your takeaway is over and you're starting to lift the club, the process of forcing the club back is basically over. And now everything you're doing is to slow the club to a stop here. And then those same muscles that were slowing the club to a stop here, are turning it around this way. And then it's like this over unity thing and it, kick, it kicks out that way. So that's like, a, so what this more forceful backswing is really helping a lot of golfers. I don't think some people have the capacity, capacity to understand this, but you know, the term like see the forest for the trees or outliers. So then, you know, this is true, like from the, the physics of it, it's a, it, the golf swing action is one part force this way, two parts that force that way. But there'll be someone like a Hideki Matsuyama or someone like a Cameron Young, or somebody that basically stops at the top or that guy that's now on Krupa or something like that on YouTube, that stops at the top and then hits a great. If somebody's the type of person that can't look in an outlier and see that there's still a basic general truth and is just like a what about person, then they're beyond help. That's like, if you can't see a trend and you can only see the outliers, then that's not super helpful. So anyway, what Grover did was with that, with the force resonance was really interesting. And in fact, the way you find resonance is simply to figure out where you go back and forth, putting in the least amount of energy. That's, so I can do this with two fingers. And then he knows my friend, Sean Cox. I believe the more speed you create, 
the more actually simple it, it becomes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about it, if you know, if I'm taking it over here and here, yeah. that's not going to be able to go as fast as if I take it here and here. Mm -hmm. who, who talked to him about these? I did another wheel about this. These wheels in the golf swing, and about the club showing or pitching down a little bit, or at least having that force in it. So like Matt Wolf, it actually pitches. Tiger, it doesn't really pitch at all, but the force is there. That force needs to be there. That This is something Grover told to my friend, Sean. So because you are going this way, you know, even if you're doing this or whatever else, you're going this way. And as I move that wheel this way, this wheel moves that way. In Joaquin Neiman, we see that extreme and we actually see it. In uh, Tiger 2000, we don't, it's happening, but the for, the underlying forces are there because you have to, the golf swing, you have to, if everything goes one direction, then then it doesn't work. Everything, and that's the hottest term in golf now is matchups. Everything in golf is a balancing. You're going this way, and then you have an appropriate equal balancing of that. And uh, it's all stuff people would totally do naturally if you gave, and I have hundreds of videos of people hitting things with sticks, sledgehammers, pinatas, uh, sticks against trees, little kids trying to beat the hell out of a cardboard box, which I did with my son and his friends. People sing, uh, swinging a regular stick is super athletic. It's something that like almost everybody can do, no, a golfer or not. And I went through this with Milo and I did, Milo did a big study with a bunch of his golfers. And then we, at one of our golf schools, we did this. Swinging a stick is super athletic and almost everybody can do. If everybody, you, you took a stick and an empty cardboard box, so this is something you should try. Um, go, take like a, a broomstick and an empty cardboard box and just film yourself in slow-mo. Just beat the hell out of this box. Hit it as hard as you can. You will see the slow motion movements of a tour pro. I don't care like who you are. You, you will see such great, motions and everything. That was a lot to take in. And I know you didn't expect a physics class from a dude who taught at Yale. So I'm going to sum it up in a Spider-Man No Way Home t-shirt that says science and magic on it. Apparently, Spider-Man tripped a lot of acid. So step one is finding resonance, which is where you put in the least amount of energy. And that's gonna give you the tempo you want to give you the right pressure that makes your positions of P1 to P10 look good. Uh, yeah, guys, so go over to Be Better Golf on YouTube and click the subscribe button. It really helps the channel. If you're watching this video and that subscribe button is not clicked already, do us a favor and click the big boy pants subscribe button. It means one second of your time, but it means like the world to us if you did that. That's good. Did you subscribe? ET can phone home if you subscribe.